Allah says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا The disbelievers, when they fall in Jahannam, successive groups. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا So all of a sudden, the doors open and they fall into hell. When they land into the hell, and you know how long it took, right? And in the process, it's really painful. So the keepers of the hell fire, the gatekeepers, as everything is organized, they ask him, Alam yatikum rusulun minkum? Has there not prophets that came from your nation? Yatluna alaykum ayati rabbikum? They came. Let me go to the points right here. They came and they told you the verses. Have you guys received or not? I'm just asking a question. I hope you don't hear that from the angels, from the Jahannam. But it's a question. Has anyone come to you, explain to you the truth? You comprehend it, inshallah? Okay, we pray that you and I never hear this from the people of hell. So then the gatekeepers in hellfire, what do they say? Have you not had a prophet in your nation recite the verses to you and warned you of this day? Did you not attend a session in Dearborn about hellfire? Subhanallah. What do they say? Now, logically, you can answer. What will they say? Yes. Because no one goes to hell except that they fully deserve it. Fair enough? Because of those that never heard, they may say we've never heard. So Allah will judge them in a way that is suitable for these people. Is that clear for all of us, inshallah? Okay, so we're done with the disclaimer. Let's proceed. So then, وَلَكِنْ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ الْعَذَابِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Well, the punishment is now definite on the disbelievers. In the first dip, first not night, first hour, not the moment you check into the room. The moment they just be dipped in hellfire, you know how bad is it? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when the one who is the most blessed person on earth from the people of hell, the wealthiest, the richest, they have everything is Gucci, okay? Everything is fantastic. The moment they are dipped in hell, they're taken out. So then they are told, يا ابن آدم هل رأيت خيرا قط هل مر بك نعيم قط have you ever seen a good day in your life? The richest, wealthiest, the greatest life ever in this world. That we all, when we see them, most of us, we say, hashtag goals. Huh? These people. When you see the guy, out of his uh, PR, personal record, and when he the bench presses, and he has the abs, he has this, he has the car, he has all the stuff, he has the house, he has the followers. Like, this is like a perfect life. If that person happens to be of the hellfire and dipped, they'll be asked, have you seen a good day in your life? You know what the person says? La wallah ya Rabb. I don't know what you're talking about. So it's like a button that resets everything. It was so bad. That dip in hell was so bad, it erased their memory. So now the question is, all the life that we're doing besides what Allah has said will be forgotten in a split of a second. Was it worth it? Subhanallah. And that's what we need to tell ourselves. Is this worth it? We're learning economics. What is it called? Opportunity cost. Yes? Which means, if I go to Florida, I cannot go to California. I got to choose between them. So every day in your life, you have an opportunity cost. Well, if I don't go to this job, I will not make this much money. But this job is haram. So if I go to this job, I will not make it to Jannah. Opportunity cost. May Allah grant us the best. Say Ameen. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that first dip, the minimum punishment in the hellfire, absolute minimum, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, La rajulun tuda'u fi ukh masi qadamayhi. A person will be standing on fire stone. There's nothing here, nothing on the arms, nothing on the neck, nothing on the waist. Just standing on fire stone. That's the minimum. Yaghli minha dimaghuh. It will boil, not the toes, not the knees, it will boil the brains. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person says, I'll give up everything. Once again, too late. What about their clothing? Their clothing made out of fire. فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِّن نَّارٍ Clothing, fire. Wear it, it's on fire. Wear the clothing. You had options in the dunya. You wore the clothing. That clothing that you chose and you knew and you were uncomfortable but you pushed yourself and you did it whether a man or a woman, yalla, wear it, replica, hellfire. Was it worth it? Was that abaya worth it? Was that dress worth it? Was that shirt worth it? Was that pants worth it? Wallahi, even if it was a halal clothing, the way you wore it to show off, the way you drag that thobe, right? The way you're coming, it can be an attitude, not just the actual clothing. Two different things. May Allah protect us. Okay, what about the food? Food, you have dari'ah. 
What's dari'? Laysa lahum ta'amun illa min dari'. What's dari'? Dari' is a item of food full of thorns. Wallahi, when we eat fish with bones, we panic sometimes. Like, is there a bone or not? You will be forced to eat this food full of thorns. La yusminu wa la yughni min ju'a. It's not nutritious, nor does it satisfy the hunger. And it's painful, it's disgusting, it's ugly and not fulfilling, nor beneficial. What else? There's food. Zakum. What's zakum? Zakum. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect us. It's a tree. As he said, he actually is right. It's a tree. Shajara. Okay, what's that tree? The product that comes from the tree is like molten metal that causes the stomach to boil. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said about zakum. Remember that word zakum. We should know now so we don't taste it later. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. What's that zakum? The Prophet says, Walaw anna qatra. You know, an eye drop. The Prophet says, if a drop of zakum falls onto earth, Everything on earth will be expired. The oceans polluted, the vegetations corrupted, everything from a drop. So the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi So the Prophet says, then what will happen to the person who has no food except it? May Allah protect us. Zakum. Allah says, Oh, you misguided liars, deniers. You will definitely eat from the tree of Zakum. You will eat to your fill. What does it do? It boils the stomach. How? Like boiling water. If the clothing is fire, the food is fire. What about the water? Fire. Look what the Prophet and Allah says in the Quran. They beg. They beg. What do they beg? They ask for help. Do you think they'll be helped? No. You know what? You are right. But when you read the ayah, you will see what Allah says. What's the next word? People of Quran, what's the next word? Yughathu. Allah says, and then they ask for help, they'll be helped. You can, khalas, we're all intelligent now. We know how Allah is doing it in Quran. When Allah talks about the afterlife, it's a different theme. Allah says in the worldly life, they made fun of us. Right? They used to walk and say, look at these fools. They used to call us animals. Yes or no? On the news. They used to tell us we're human animals. So they caught electricity and food. So they mock us. Today is our day. Today is our time. Muslim time, inshallah. Submission time. So Allah says, On the day of judgment, the believers will laugh. So it's all about who laughs at the end. It's all about the ending, not the beginning. So then, وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيثُوا They ask for help, you غَاثُوا You want help? You غَاثُوا We'll help you out. You غَاثُوا بِمَاءٍ كَالْمُهْلِ You want water? Here you go. مَاءٍ كَالْمُهْلِ Water that is boiling. How hot is the water? Doesn't just boil the stomach. As it approaches the face, يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهِ The water is being brought to drink. It burns the face in the process. What will happen to the stomach, the internal organs? Allah says, Suku ma an hamima am'a'am. Internal organs are destroyed. Not just that, they are to drink, then poured all over. Thumma subbu fawqa ra'se. Pour on top of his head. While they're pouring boiling water that burns the face, what do they tell the person? Dhuq innaka anta al aziz al kareem. Enjoy, taste, you're the honorable. You're the untouchable. You're the most noble. Making fun of him. Because that's how they were in dunya. Untouchable. Above the law. Allahu Akbar. All kinds of punishment. It gets worse. Allah says there's even worse. Then Allah says, When the burn is so severe, the skin is khalas. The flesh is what? You don't feel it. May Allah protect us. Allah says we exchange new flesh. بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا Why Allah new flesh? لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ To taste the punishment, to taste the pain. إِنَّ اللَّهَ Look at the ending. Indeed, Allah is almighty. Allah, this requires might. Hakima wise as who deserves that. May Allah not make us of them. Then they, halas, struggling in pain. So they beg Allah. وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا They beg Allah. يَا رَبْ ah, Now, Ya Rabb. Huh? Now, Ya Allah. Before, what was it? May Allah protect us. 
أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل we beg you give us a chance let us leave so we can do good stuff so Allah says أولم نعمركم مش دعمرت did you not live long life in دنيا did we not give you hundreds of chances ما يتذكر فيه من تذكر whoever wanted to be mindful they would have وجاءكم النذير and someone came and warned you that's it taste the punishment so they beg Allah okay listen ربنا أخرجنا منها Okay, can we do a deal, a contract? Take us out of hell, فَإِنْ عُدْنَا And if we end up doing what we used to do, فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ Then we're oppressors. What does Allah say? You guys got the deal or no? Bring us back to life, and if we end up doing what we used to do, then we, we deserve it. قَالَ اَخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ Zip your mouth. اَخْسَأُوا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ لَا حَرْفُ SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. They used to tell others, be quiet. They used to censor you when you post on Instagram and Facebook. Now they're censored. In a legitimate way, the haq way, the truth way, Allahu Akbar. Then Allah says what specific deed they did. And listen carefully. Allah says, I had a group of servants. May Allah make us of the servants of Allah. Say Ameen. They used to say, so now Allah will tell you what his servants used to say to memorize what they said. رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّحِمِينَ Oh Allah, forgive us. We believe in you. You're the most merciful. Allah says, when they used to worship me, فَاتَّخَذْتُمُوهُمْ سِخْرِيَّةً You used to make fun of them. Oh, look, look at her. If her body was really fit, she wouldn't wear this fluffy hijab. Doesn't it say it like that sometimes? Look at this man. Why you're having the beard patches like that? Oh, look at these weirdos waking up in the morning, slaves to something they cannot see. Right? What is it that you put your head on the floor for? You go seven times around a black cube and you graduated from Harvard. Right? Making fun of the people. You go and not eat from the dawn all the way to sunset. What kind of faith is that? What kind of merciful God is he? How is it that this religion, you say, he is the Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. You keep saying it at the introduction of every Islamic event. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Where is the most merciful what's happening to your brothers in Gaza? Mockery. So much so that you forgot your own selves. And this is the punishment for what you used to laugh about. Look at the ending. The ones that you made fun of, I rewarded them for what they were patient for. So brothers and sisters, be patient. Bima sabaru annam humul. فائزون طيب خلاص so the people in hell they gave up on Allah so now oh, some people made it to Jannah we will talk about Jannah we're going to end on a nice note inshallah so people made it to Jannah ونادى أصحاب النار أصحاب الجنة so now people in hell fire are trying to dial somehow to communicate with those where in heaven أن أفيضوا علينا من الماء give us some water from Jannah because our water is boiling give us some water or anything مما رزقكم الله what did the people in Jannah say? قالوا إن الله حرمهما على الكافر. This is haram. Water is not haram. I was in Durban with you. Water was never haram. Well, today water is haram for the disbelievers. Allah Akbar. Those who mocked the religion and those who never took serious. خلاص. Allah didn't help me. The people in Jannah didn't help me. So I'm going to go talk to the gatekeeper of hell. Make a deal. وقال الذين في النار لخزنة جهنم. The gatekeepers of hell. What do they tell him? Udu'u Rabbakum, go talk to Allah. Tell Allah to give us one day off. Tell Allah, Minash one day off. Just lower the temperature. Yawm min adab. So the angel, the gatekeeper, what's his name? Malik. Malik. I'm going to bring his name up again. Awalam taku ta'atikum rasulukum al bayina. The gatekeeper says, Did you not know about all this before? Did you not attend like a two and a half hour session and you were sweating, you can't go wait to leave? Did you not hear this? Did you not watch videos? Did you, we're not, do you not aware of this? What do they say? Khalas, all experts. What's the answer? What do they say? Bala, mashallah, fantastic. So then the angel says, Fad'u. So keep making dua. Makri, bahadala. Right? Fad'u. Wa ma dua'u al kafirina illa fi dala. Make dua. But by the way, your dua is meaningless. But keep going. Subhanallah. So now they feel hopeless. They feel khalas. There's nothing we can do. وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكْ Malik is the boss, the chief of the angels. يَا مَالِكْ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ Tell Allah to eliminate us. We don't want no more chances, but just finish us. End us. قَالْ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ You're staying here forever. Subhanallah. 
Brothers and sisters, khalas, a lot obviously is happening. Someone shows up. Perhaps a podium, a stage filled with fire, filled with misery, disaster, he shows up. And who shows up? The devil. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانِ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ خلاص, everything is clear. You're in hell, you're not leaving, we're in this together. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانِ You want to hear the sermon of the devil? Let's hear. It's in the Quran. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ Look to what he said. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ Allah promised you the truth. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ And I also promised, but I broke my promise. Subhanallah. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I had no control over you. I never said, oh, touch this, click that. No, I just, دَعَوْتُكُمْ I whispered, and you, فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي You just listen to me. فَلَا تُلُومُونِ Don't blame me, oh, the devil. No, don't blame me on the devil. You're, you're lame, blame yourself. You're a devil yourself. فَلَا تُلُومُونِ وَلُومُ أَنفَسِكُمْ Blame your own self. He made us false promises. He told you, oh, it rang. Oh. Okay, sunrise is at 7, it's 6.30, 30 minutes. Snooze. Snooze, I will wake you up. What happens? Sunrise comes. Broke his promise. Um, you know what? Okay, uh, you, you missed some days from Ramadan? Yeah, I had some days I have to make up. Okay, okay. Don't make it right after Ramadan. It's okay. Just give it six months. Aisha, radiallahu anha, authentic narration. He knows Deen, huh? She used to push the making up of the fasts before the next Ramadan. So wait. Ramadan, inshallah, is on Monday. And we did not make up the days. Made the promise, broke it. Oh, you know what? Why, why, why were the hijab? You're still high school, mashallah, tabarakallah. We, we still have a future, Allahumma barik. You know what? Just uh, don't wear the hijab now. When you graduate, married with three kids, nothing. La ilaha illallah. Lied, lied. Oh, you know what? You know what? Your dad is angry, but what happens at the end of the day? He calms down. Yes or no? Your mom is so upset. She says, get out of my house. But you know mothers are just saying it. So just wait till your dad cools down. Everything will be just fine. Now if you go and you say, I'm sorry now, he will punch you. Go later. And shaitan never tells you later to come back. Your father has passed away to return back to Allah. And he's laughing. I promised and I promised and I promised. Everything will be just fine. You will make it for Juma. Just send that email. Why you complicate it? Just use chat GPT. Write up any response. Come on. And you missed half of the khutbah. Keeps and we keep falling for the promise. When are we going to wake up? Including myself. Say, A'udhu Billah min Shaitan. Then he says at the end, Fala talumuni, don't blame me, blame yourself. I cannot save you, nor can you save me. I denounce, I disagree with everything that you did. Wallah, you want to go punch him. Right? It's like, I disagree with everything that you guys did. And how dare you put me next to God? Like, shame on you. You listen to me and not listen to God. Inna al-zalimina lahum adabun alim. Indeed, the oppressors have a severe punishment. Brothers and sisters, let's talk about the guy who was in front of the gate of paradise. He's been waiting, right? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, let's proceed, inshallah. Yalla, open the gate. Hold on. Yaqi, hold on, you guys in a rush. Subhanallah. I wish we rushed like that to salah and to the good deeds. Before we open, there's one last thing. A famous matter the Prophet told us about is called Qantara. It's another bridge. Oh, bridge again, that calm down. This bridge is different. This bridge is to have not a car wash, have a heart wash. So that bridge, you will meet the person that you might not have felt very comfortable towards. You might have even went to court one time, you got your rights back, things are resolved. He even said sorry, she said sorry. So it's kind of like fixed, but it's like this. But you don't want to go to Jannah like that. So you go to the Qantara, فَيَتَقَاصُونَ مَا ظَلِمَا كَانَتْ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا They fix relationships they had in the dunya. They didn't have the best, like whenever there was dinner, they would never invite that person. And not, not, I don't hate them, but I just don't like their vibes. <laughs> okay? So in Qantara, the vibes are checked, inshallah. The vibe check, fantastic. Sounds good? حَتَّى إِذَا نُقُّوا وَهُذِّبُوا Now that you're clean, now, gates to Jannah. خلاص? Qantara, so we don't get misinformed uh, is that it's not someone gives the good deeds to the point that they're pushed to hell. No, that's before. No one passes the bridge then ever falls back. Make sense? Some of the stuff that I said in hellfire, a believer may go through that, a Muslim. Remember what the Prophet told us. 
a very evil Muslim, sometimes they have to go through the filter process, then they eventually climb up. But now we're in Jannah. Khalas. Yalla, bismillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ Allahu Akbar. No jealousy, no hatred, no envy. You love everyone. The Prophet says, قُلُوهُمْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ رَجُلٍ وَاحَدٍ Our hearts is like one single human being. In what sense? We are all united. In Jannah, we will all agree. Ramadan, based on calculations. No, there's no Ramadan in Jannah. But there's no difference of opinion. There's no like, I don't feel like eating chicken in Jannah. I want meat. No, no, no. We're all going to be content. Allahu Akbar. Yalla, bismillah, open the door. Hold on, let me tell you how big. The Prophet ﷺ told us the gate of Jannah is 40 years long. And if you want to go from one end to the other end, it takes you 40 years. Allahu Akbar. Not just that, it's crowded. So there's a lot of people. Inshallah, you and I are there, inshallah. Remember me, ICD. All right? And then me and the brother would do a chest bump together, all the good stuff. Right? Allahu Akbar. But the gate is still closed. We're excited. Ya Allah. Right? We struggled, man. Right? We had to give up half our 401k because it was riba. And I can't wait to go to Jannah. And I missed the whole Bitcoin surge. But Alhamdulillah. Right? I want to go to Jannah. So imagine you have a father. Okay? Waiting for Jannah. But that father, all of a sudden someone comes. Here you go. And they're past a child. <gasps> Who's that child? That child that died under the age of puberty. So before they even enter Jannah, you would go take your son with you and your daughter. Allahu Akbar. Look at the rahmah. May Allah grant it to all the martyrs of Gaza and those around the world. Ya Rabb. There's a lot of people struggling around the world. It's not just Gaza. All of them. May Allah grant them all Jannah. Say Ameen. So they go, look at the joy. You know who gives the child? Who hands the child? Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, and his wife, Sarah. So the family is reunited. Allahu Akbar. Yalla, bismillah. Ah, you're standing. Jannah, alhamdulillah, Jannah is good. But wallah, if I was just married, that would have been... Imagine all of a sudden you died as a single. Okay? And then someone comes and holds your hand. There's no, there's no astaghfirullah in Jannah. There's no, no, no. Right? Who am... Allah paired us together. Sure, sure, alhamdulillah. No mahar, no dowry, no dowry. Well, your father knows, who cares? That's the time, it doesn't matter what father thinks. Right? The Prophet says, وَمَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَحْزَبْ Authentic, no one in Jannah is single. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Right? But don't go now depend on that. Wallah, since no one is single, I'll live single. لا, 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 لا. Aim for marriage. May Allah bless you. Say, Ameen. Yalla, bismillah. Oh, open the door. It's not opening. Yeah, it will not open. Because it will open to one person. Someone comes. <laughs> knocks on the door. So the gatekeeper of Jannah says, Man ant, who is it? Fa'akhulu Muhammad. I am Muhammad. So the angel says, Bika umirtu. La aftah li ahadin qablak. To you I will open. I will not open it to anyone before you. So then the Jannah gates are open. Yalla. Let's enter inshallah. You go. Then the Prophet tells you, when you enter, you know your place and house in Jannah better than how you know it in dunya. You will not, like, you will not miss an exit because that's a new house that you moved into. You went back home. Al Jannah You know how you come and you put your like jacket and you put everything when the lights are off. You know everything. You know Jannah better than how your house in dunya. As they enter, there's a welcome greeting. What happens? The angels say, Salamun alaykum, Salamun alaykum, Tibtum, welcome, welcome to Jannah. Fadkhuluha, enter it. Khalidin, you'll be here forever. Allahu Akbar, Wallah, no entertainment or amusement in the world can express this. Yalla, Bismillah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the most miserable, poorest, weakest human being on earth comes. Does that sound similar? To the hellfire, the richest, strongest. So the one who had the roughest life in the world, the one that you saw on Instagram and you cried like, Ya Allah, bless him. Ya Allah, thank you for what you gave me. That person will be dipped in Jannah. Then we asked, have you ever seen a hard day in your life? The guy who lost his family, children, job, got oppressed, got false accusation, got chopped into, it's a disaster. Have you seen hard times in your life? I don't know, what are you talking about? I have no clue what you're talking about. I'm in Jannah. And let's seize the moment. Yalla, bismillah, clothing, Allahu Akbar, clothing in Jannah. I wish to put images, but wallahi, AI can't do it. 
Okay? So the clothing in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a tree. Just like the tree of Zakum, but different. The tree is 100 years long to cross. The clothing comes out of its branches. It's not made by high-end brands. Allah Jalla Jalalu created Jannah with his own hands. Then the Prophet says, La tubla thiyabum, the clothing doesn't wear out. You know this oh, Clorox again. Oh my God. Ah, I got you. It happens, right? And your Clorox clothing stays at home. And we all know this. Your pajamas most likely. May Allah forgive us, right? But there in Jannah, you put Clorox, you put whatever. May Allah protect us. It's nice and clean. But what about the food and drink? Vegetables, fruits, no allergies. Allahu Akbar. Right? Nothing. Any meat that you want, medium well, well done, whatever you like. Tayyib, if I eat a lot, I end up using the bathroom. No bathroom. What happens to my stomach? I know you're a nurse and a physician. Calm down. When you eat in Jannah, the way you digest your food is by burp. That's it, done. <clears throat> All set. Nice and clean. Next meal if you want. The Prophet says, وَلَكِنْ طَعَامٌ مِذَاكَ جُشَاءٌ كَرَشْحِ الْمِسْكِ And your burp doesn't stink. It's cologne. But a couple of those, please. Okay. <laughs> right? You don't, I don't know if you'll do that in Jannah, but it smells great. Okay? Tayyib, Bismillah. How was my house? Bro, I was renting on Schaefer, okay, for 15 years. Because this Haram Bank of America and that stuff. Give me a house. Wallah house. Wallah, you get a house better than the best houses in the whole world. How is it? Let me tell you the outside. Let me tell you the, the landscape. A brick of gold, brick of silver. That's the outside. What do you people usually do between bricks in this world? Uh, cement or what else? Uh, uh, all that stuff, right? You're going to put cement between gold and silver? Even that the Prophet describes. Between them is musk. Subhanallah. And then as you walk, you know your landscape, we have river rock, Ooh. right? If you know what's river rock, mashallah. If you don't, may Allah grant you Jannah, okay? <laughs> Landscape, river rocks and stuff like that. You know what's your river rocks? Hasba'uha <laughs> lu'lu. Your river rocks are pearls. So you walk like, oh, like, oh pearls. I got a lot of those, mashallah, right? Look, waliyaqut wa turbatuha za'faran. The sand is gorgeous. Tayyib, how do you look like? Uh, we, we care about looks. I understand. That's why we use filters. Jannah, no filters. No need for filters, right? Outward beauty, inna ansha'nahunna ansha'a. Everyone will have perfectly created mates. Your spouse, Allahumma barik. Okay, no, no hazard or evil eye. So much so, the Prophet said, just to give you a comparison, if one of the sisters, may Allah grant you all Jannah, say Ameen. If one of you in Jannah just like peeks in the dunya, you would not do that because dunya is meaningless, right? But if you were just to peek into the dunya, the earth, the solar system, just to peek, the brightness, the, the greatness, everybody will feel your presence. You will glow the whole earth. You're beautiful, you smell great, entire earth just goes to a whole other level. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us the best. Then you're purified in and out. So this whole thing like sickness every month and so on, none of that is existent. But what about inside beauty like love because we can look good, we have a mate, but what about manners and tree, like he loves me for who I am, okay, that type of stuff, okay? You love me for who I am. Uruban, what? Atraba. Allah says love and we will be similar in age. We're all going to be young. How old in Jannah? One narration says 30, one narration says 33. MashaAllah, prime, Allahumma barik. Tayyib, shopping, shopping in Jannah? Oh, you bet, right? Halas, now Jannah, make dua more, right? Shopping, inna fil jannati la suqa. The Prophet says there's a shopping center in Jannah. Where do we go? When do we go? Every Friday. Every single week, summer, I mean, every single week to the Jamaah, uh, inshallah. Somerset, you go and you look, and sisters, they go sometimes to Somerset and they see Toomey. They see Louis Vuitton, okay? <laughs> they see this and they see that. And then they look at their husband and say, may Allah grant me Jannah, right? May Allah make it easy, right? So don't go to Somerset. If you can't afford it, may Allah make it easy, right? You can tell I'm, I'm hurt, but say, may Allah make it easy, okay? I go to uh, Ferling. Anyway, let's move on, inshallah. Shame on you for laughing. We're proud of Ferling. Ferling, dear boy, 313. Okay, bismillah. But in Jannah, every Friday. All right, Bismillah. Yalla. 
Every time you go to the shopping center, it's a nice breeze. It's like an outlet mall outdoors. Allahu outdoors, proper. فَتَهُبُّ رِيحُ الشَّمَالِ Wind comes from the north, it comes to the face, comes to the body. What happens to you? فَيَزْدَادُونَ حُسْلًا وَجَمَالًا You become even more beautiful than last time. So your beauty goes up. In this dunya, we go down. Right? In this dunya, we go down. Are they getting old? Wrinkles now every time because all the years of me being animated. Look at me. May Allah make it easy. See what I mean? Okay, we need some filters. When I do a video, filter this. All right, may Allah forgive us. Right? And no, in, in Jannah, it goes up. You look better and better and better. Wallahi, ready for this? They go back to their family. The wife comes back, the husband comes back. Your spouse, your family tells you, Wallahi, you look better. It's a ni'mah in Jannah. It's a blessing in Jannah that your husband notices that you look better. What do you mean? You remember the highlights? And you paid $240 on Warren Avenue? Then you came to your husband like, do you see? And he's like, what do you want? And you're like, what do you mean? And I can you notice her hair was up to here. Now it's here. And he's like, what are you talking about? You can't see? Like, what kind of man do I have? Right? So in Jannah, you would notice the man says, wow, like, really? I love Jannah. And even brothers who have haircuts, you will notice, okay? Because we keep having haircuts, what did they tell us? You really went to, to the barber, right? We went to the barber, we had a lineup that no one sees except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> right? May Allah make it easy, say ameen. So we all notice what we're going through. Tayyib, yalla, family reunion, father is there, mother is there. But يعني, not all the children were as good. I hope you're the best child. Say ameen. But your brother is next to you. May Allah grant you both the best. <laughs> right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy, though people are different levels, He allows the whole family to be reunited. Allah. But the question is, with whose level? Or is that the worst? That's fair. Right? If you ever go to Delta, you think they'll all upgrade you to first class because your father has diamond medallion? No, you all go to main cabin. Inshallah. Right? They'll not upgrade you because of your father. Maybe one guy, okay, sure. But not all seven and eight. In Jannah, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, chapter 52, verse 21. Those who believed and their progeny followed through into the deen. What happens? We bring them all together. Lovely ayah. Allah says, we will not decrease anyone. All of you will be upgraded to the best one in the family. So don't depend on mom. I know mom is amazing. Masha'Allah, tabarakallah. You depend on yourself. That's what the Prophet told his own daughter Fatima. The Prophet told Fatima, radiallahu anha, and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Fatima, ask me what you want from this world, I can give you. But on the day of judgment, you're on your own. No one will bail you out. Don't say, oh, Allah, my dad's pretty nice. He's very... No, no, no. You work on your own. Tabiyallah, bismillah. The brother, we're married. I want to ask a question. Might be sensitive. No, bismillah, ask. Hey, whatever. Wallah, tab, tab, what if I want children? Can I have children in Jannah? So the bottom line is this, or the golden rule, or the rule of thumb. I'm giving you three, huh? Anything you want in Jannah, you will get. Anything, yani anything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when the believer, yashtahil walad, desires to have a child, kana hamluhu, the pregnancy, wa wad'u, the delivery, sinatun fi sa'atin kama yashtahi, it's a matter of time, you will be pregnant. You will experience it. Allah, the stomach. Do you hear this? Everything, all that stuff. I want ultrasound in Jannah, ultrasound in Jannah. Ask for it, no problem, inshallah, right? All that, and you actually deliver, but there's no pain. No uh, body changes, none of that stuff, but you experience that. May Allah grant us righteous children. Say, I mean, then you go in Jannah and you ask for your friends and your family. Let's have fun. You will have couches, chit chat, enjoy your time, and we'll talk. What do you think made us come to Jannah? Like, what do you think the deal? Well, when I was doing the scale, I noticed something pretty cool. It was actually that one time I saw a Futushini Alfredo sauce at the edge of a Kroger store. It was about to fall, so I pushed it back so it doesn't drop. So that's how I made it. <laughs> Brother, what are you saying? It's 9.30, you're supposed to finish. That's number one. Because the Prophet wasallam said, he saw a man yataqallabu fil jannah, chilling in jannah. Why is that man chilling in jannah? Because he saw a tree branch on the floor, he moved it. Don't belittle a good deed as the brother just taught us. May Allah bless him. So then you go, khalas, the end. We're having fun. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them a question. Are you guys happy? Do you guys want anything else? So we all say, remember we have what? Who remembers? One heart. MashaAllah alayk. We have one heart. We're all the same. That one says, I want more of this. We're happy. No, no complainers in Jannah. Alhamdulillah. So we say, Ya Allah, we're happy. How could we not be happy? So Allah says, I have more. So we say, more? What's more? He says that I will be happy with you. I'll never be angry. And Allah reveals himself. And you see Allah as clear as you see a full moon in a clear night and sky. And that will be the greatest blessing in Jannah. May Allah make you and I to see Allah. The one that you did all that for. The one that you're sweating now for. The one that you're sitting, you can't wait to stand up for. The one that you prayed for. The one you changed your alarm, you changed your calculus section one to two because of Ramadan. The one that you wore the hijab for. The one that you gave up your money for. Now you see him and it's all worth it. Allahu Akbar. And then at the end, brothers and sisters, as everybody's in Jannah, everybody's in hell, an announcement is made. What's that announcement? A man comes and he gives an announcement and he stands between the people of hell and the people of Jannah. Four announcements. You will live forever. So whatever they may be. You will live forever, O people of Jannah, and you will never die. So parachute and skydive without parachute, inshallah. You will never die in Jannah. Number two, you will always be healthy and you will never be sick in Jannah. No headaches, no stomach aches. May Allah grant us the best. Say Ameen. And you will be in Jannah and you will always be young. Allahu Akbar. No back pain, no bulge disc for those that are up above. You know what I'm talking about. You will always be young and my personal favorite is number four. All is great. You will always be happy and you'll never be sad and you will never cry like that baby. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you guys are the best. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless the baby. Say Ameen. Thank you. Thank you.